Tudor, thank you very much for being here with me. Thank you for inviting me. I want to start by something very simple and then going progressively more and more complete, hopefully not complex. Okay. So you are working on a project called Hive. That's correct. That has many facets. And um, just like a chain, blockchain or not blockchain, like a chain, you can pull one or the other of the links and depending on what you pull up, the rest will take a given shape. So if I were to ask you to start telling me about Hive and pick the link in the chain of these different facets, just one, which would be the first you picked up and, and what would it represent as a starting point for talking about Hive? Sure, that's actually an amazing question to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I would say the most important facet of Hive and you know the, the facet that links all of the different chains together is actually the collaboration module. Uh, first of all, it, it's built in a generalistic fashion. So that allows for various you know, forms of collaboration between both people and machines, whether it's a task, whether it's a job that's based on a length of time or an objective, uh, whether it's a competition or anything like it. Uh, you can just choose to make use of it and then once you start with the task, you then start having all of the different chains that you're talking about, like the disputes, the escrow, uh, signing contracts on the blockchain and all of that stuff. So that's pretty much the actual core of what Hive does. And it also works in tandem with the protocol, uh, which enables two very specific things. The first one being that as long as something can be measured objectively, whether that's, you know, distance, time, taking a picture, signing up, downloading an app, uh, it becomes self-verifiable by design. And then the second thing it does is it allows machines to actually collaborate with one another. Say we have a, a delivery to make over, you know, 20 kilometers, and we want to achieve that with drones, but they only have a 15 kilometer autonomy. Uh, they can actually just use a protocol to talk to one another and they're each going to, you know, traverse half the distance and then split the reward of the task for the delivery. So uh, this example, of course, is fascinating. And the entire machine to machine uh, vision is what originally inspired uh, the creation of smart contracts uh, that uh, enable uh, not only uh, simple programs to, to collaborate, which we have been doing for 50, 60 years with computers anyway, but for th the consequences of these uh, to be uh, a financial transaction. Correct. Going one step back, this uh, ability to uh, set up um, a collaboration with many different parameters and dimensions is something that hundreds of other platforms do, whether they are small or big. Upwork, for example, is a popular one. Correct. What is the advantage of using Hive instead of Upwork? For example, not for a machine, which Upwork wouldn't be able to accommodate, but for a human. Sure. Um... You know, a, a lot of people have tried to say that blockchain is going to make intermediaries disappear. I, I don't think that intermediaries will disappear. They are, however, getting a new form or, you know, a new, a new code, if you will. Um, intermediaries on the blockchain are, first of all, generalistic. And second of all, you're autonomous because the intermediary, the intermediation of, you know, a task, for example, is done through smart contracts, as you've said. So that gives, you know, certain advantages over a, a system that is controlled by a centralized authority. The first one, because you gave Upwork as an example, which is a great example, is that a lot of people have uh, 
had trouble with Upwork because their accounts would just get suspended out of nowhere. And even if in the end your account gets, you know, reinstated, the problem is that for the entire duration of the dispute, you are completely unable to access your money. And after all, the decision to even suspend your account in the first place is taken by a centralized authority, which by design might be wrong. This can never happen with blockchain, right? So this can never happen on Hive. Even if I would want to ban a user, I would never be able to do that, regardless of how much I'd wish to. And this, you know, also goes hand in hand with what happened with Twitter, right? And the ban, the deplatforming. And in this particular case, you know, some people argued that it was the correct decision. But what if in the future, uh, another similar decision comes up and that one is not going to be the correct decision, right? So blockchain doesn't give the possibility for that to even exist. That's one thing. The second thing is that on Hive, you can even pay 0% fee. Like if you reward the whole task in the, in the native token, you don't pay a fee at all. If you just pay the fee in Hive, it's 0.25%. And even if you pay it in whatever you'd like to, it's at most 0.5%, right? Whereas Upwork or Fiverr or Freelancer.com, it's 10, 20%, and then you got another free 5% to send it to your PayPal or to your bank account. And even beyond that, it's probably going to take like five to seven days. So let me give an example. Let's say, you know, I wake up this morning and I realize I'm missing a hundred dollars and I have a skill. Maybe I'm a designer and I could make a logo today and earn those hundred dollars. Right. But the problem is if I do it on Upwork or any other such platform, I'm not going to be able to make use of that money in the very foreseeable future. Whereas with Hive, once I finished my task, I get that money instantly and I can use it. So it fulfills the actual purpose, you know, because, yeah, OK, Upwork is great if you if you want to earn money starting in two weeks from now. Right. But if you need money to buy a gift for a friend tomorrow, Upwork is not really going to be that much of a help for you. Um, you mentioned um, Hive the platform. Yes. Hive the protocol and have the marketplace. Correct. These are uh, different components. Um, and uh, which is coming first? And how do you expect a differential uh, uptake from the target users of these various components to be? Sure. So Hive currently has four components. Um, the first one is the Hive Core, which is the collection of smart contracts that handles all of these different interactions. So this will be connected to an API library that we give to people to allow them to build their own platforms, whether that be, you know, a decentralized Uber or a decentralized Airbnb, because at the core, uh, Uber is nothing more than a task and Airbnb is nothing more than just an offer like on Fiverr. You have these packages and that's how much you pay for them and that's what you get for each one. Um, then the second component is the actual protocol which we've gone through, uh, the Hive client which is the platform itself and the fourth one is Hive launch, right? Which allows projects to first of all do their fundraiser and second of all they can create their own token so it can either be an ERC-20 for Ethereum or a BEP-20 for Binance Smart Chain. They come pre-audited because the contracts are built by an auditing company. And then after they do this, we allow those projects to run their own individual governance through our infrastructure. So people can make proposals and vote with that individual native token to decide various things for the particular platform. And they can also create like staking vaults, liquidity mining vaults and so on and so forth. It's basically like, you know, um, a one stop shop for projects to just handle the part of actually taking care of the business, the administrative stuff in terms of blockchain. And as for the client, uh, that also contains the marketplace you were talking about, right? Um, so in the client, you can either be a user, 
right? And just post tasks or solve tasks and stuff like that. Or you can be an application that's built inside of Hive. And what do I mean by that? Let's say I earn as a freelancer on Hive an average of uh, $1,000 a month, which is $12,000 a year. Uh, but what if I need to take a loan of $5,000 to get a car so that I can get my kids to school every day? Um, I can actually just take a loan, you know, through, say, AVE, which we integrate directly into Hive. And then I vouch that I'm going to be paying for this through the fact that the money I earn is held into escrow by the Hive ecosystem. So if, for example, I decide to default on that loan, then Hive can just automatically pay the loan on my behalf. And so everyone is safe and secure, right? Even further than that, um, you gain a reputation. My account is going to say, I've worked on these tasks, I've hired people for these tasks, I've taken a loan and paid it back, or maybe I defaulted and the system paid it back. So all of that gives you some sort of reputation that doesn't take into consideration, you know, the color you have, the height you have, wh what country you come from. It's all about what you did that can be verified on the public ledger. That's who you are from a business perspective, if you will, right? Um, once again, even leaving the machine part on the side, and yes. I hope we'll have the opportunity to uh, sit down for another conversation where maybe we will concentrate on just that. Sure. Uh, there are more or less 3.5 billion people of working age on the planet today. And the leading platform for professional uh, opportunity management, however you want to you know, define it at the end, i.e. LinkedIn, only has 20% of that with 700 million people. And the transactional capability of LinkedIn is, is practically non-existent. Correct. So, I don't know uh, your roadmap and milestones, but the opportunity is certainly huge because um, everyone will use digital tools in order to uh, define, manage, execute, and then finally earn a living from their skills in the future and as a consequence there will be a pool of 3.5 billion people for hive to target and i wish you great success uh, as you are launching hive very shortly that's correct uh, in uh, starting it is not going to be 3 billion, 2 billion, 1 billion, it will start from a few hundred, then a few thousand, then tens of thousands, and then hopefully soon millions. So I'm looking forward to be able and follow the path that uh, Hive is going to take. Thank you so much, David. We are definitely looking forward to that as well, because, you know, of those 3.5 billion people, there's probably, you know, a, a large percentage of them, say 50%, who have the capabilities to just find various ways to earn money, right? Whether that be through a job or just starting a company or anything that you want to, to name, right? But there's also a lot of those people who don't have those privileges. If we're just talking about like Southeast Asia or Africa or even some of the Eastern European countries, there are people who have a really hard time just putting food on the table and providing the basic necessities for their families. And even if we just skip the skills that people can use altogether, I think that where Hive comes in is offering people a place where they can earn some income regardless of if they have a skill or not. You can, for example, just market research for a company, right? So you can go, uh, let's say, in Monaco, where we are here, and just visit each individual mini market and supermarket and screenshot each individual uh, carton of milk. 
So you can do market research to find out what milk sells in Monaco. And then as a milk producing company, you can use that to see what you should do in terms of your branding and packaging and so on and so forth, right? And you don't need a skill for that. You just need a phone and you go and take the pictures and that's it, right? So I think that for, for these people who don't come from a place of privilege, um, Hive will be a, a game changer in, in terms of what they can achieve with it and how they can change, you know, their lives, to be perfectly honest, especially in a post-pandemic world, which, you know, is plagued by a, a lot of inefficiencies in the systems we have. And even beyond that, um, by a lot of people whose skills are not as necessary as they were before. So I, I think um, I think we, we might get maybe not billions, but at least to a decent number of people who use Hive quite quickly because the, the necessity is there. Uh, it's just no one wanted to spend the necessary time building this. Yeah. Tudor, thank you very much. Congratulations you. again and looking forward to our future conversations. I definitely look forward to it as well. Thank you so much for inviting me.